Hello everyone and welcome to another most exciting game from the Famalicao Open Tournament 2019. The game comes as a suggestion from a subscriber, uh, Pedro Fonesca, so thank you for that. And uh, the game is great, but it leads to an even greater achievement. We're going to talk about that a bit more after we check out the game. It's a game between uh, Portuguese Grandmaster Luis Gallego and Armenian Grandmaster Karen Grigorian. And uh, it's uh, also a really interesting fact that Grigorian comes into this game. It's a game from the final round, from round 9, uh, as already the winner of the tournament. He won 8 previous games, so now he's 8-8 eight in eight, uh, and he faces, uh, well, uh, the, the Portuguese Grandmaster as his final test. So let's see the game. Uh, the E4 is already on the board, so let's just check it out. We have C5. Grigorian goes for the Sicilian defense. We have Knight to F3, D6, and now C3. Uh, the Alapin variation, preparing d4, not going for d4 immediately. Knight to f6, and now bishop to b5 check. We have bishop to d7, now we have a trade here, bishop captures, queen captures, and now d3. So white keeping it uh, uh, slow, so to say. Uh, he, he keeps the center, uh, and now e6 by black, preparing bishop to e7. We have castles by white, and now bishop to e7. And there are a couple of moves that have been played in this position. Knight bd2 has been played here, rook to e1 has been played here. Uh, Gallego already had this position uh, in 2000 against uh, Helgi Olafsson and played a3 here. The game ended in a draw. Also, David Bronstein in 1946 uh, played queen to e2 he uh, here. Uh, he was able to win a very nice game with this move, but bishop to g5, the move Gallego plays uh, now in this position is a new move, and already as of move 8, we have a completely new game. Uh, so let's see how the game continues. We have h6 challenging the bishop and already bishop captures on f6, which is very, uh, very interesting as white already gave up both of the bishops uh, and it's uh, interesting to see wh where the compensation is for this. We have d4, c captures on d4, c captures on d4 and black now castles. We have knight to c3, knight to c6 and now just rook to c1, of course, developing the rook to a nice open c file uh, and already we have d5 from black and you will often hear if black is able to execute d5 in the Sicilian, uh, then he's doing very well. Uh, e5 is not a problem here. Uh, it would be a problem if white had a light square bishop to put on this beautiful diagonal, but he doesn't as he gave it away. Uh, bishop to e7 and black just continues. There's um, there's no good way white can take advantage of this. So after d5 we have e captures on d5, e captures on d5 and now queen to d3. Just developing the queen, connecting rooks uh, and rook f8. Black also puts a rook on a nice open e file. We have rook f to d1 and now comes rook to e6. Already black is ready to double up rooks on the, uh, on the e file. Uh, we have g3 by white. Uh, and now comes bishop to g5. So what do you do here? Uh, if you capture here, you could capture, it's not a problem, but then black might be able to start an attack against the white king, maybe some rook h6 followed by queen to h3 ideas are possible now that the g3 has been played. So white decides against this. First we have rook back to b1, as the rook was under attack here, and now comes knight to b4, attacking the queen and pressuring the a2 pawn. Uh, we have queen to b5, offering a queen trade, and the black, of course, is very happy to oblige. We have queen captures, knight captures, and now uh, rook to d8, not allowing rook to c7 uh, to come with a nice fork against the rook. So rook to d8, uh, also uh, additional defense to the d5 pawn, and here black says, okay, you capture my pawn, I'm going to capture your pawn. It's not a problem. So white decides against this with knight to c3, defending the a2 pawn, and now bishop back to f6, controlling the knight on f3 and also putting pressure on the d4 pawn. Uh, we have rook b back to c1, and now g5, preparing g4 to kick away the knight. We have h3, preventing this, and black uh, really wants to push g4, so h5. Uh, what do you play here? Uh, king to g2 by white, and now g4. And okay, we have h captures, h captures, and now comes knight to e5. Uh, and here black decides to capture. We have bishop captures, d captures, and now a nice decision to make. What do you play here? Do you recapture immediately, or do you maybe play something else? Uh, here capturing immediately runs into rook to d4. Rook d4 with an attack against the knight here, and then after you move the knight, you get rook captures with check and you don't really gain anything. Here, instead of capturing right away, uh, we have, sorry about that, whoa, uh, we have d4, uh, attacking the knight, and uh, what do you do now? 
uh, the knight is under attack we have knight to e4 and now okay you capture the knight but you still don't get to keep your g4 pawn uh, sorry you capture the pawn we have knight to f6 with check king g7 attacking the knight and now comes the knight captures on g4 and now rook to g5 uh, it's a bit different from the line we've just shown as it's now black who's calling the shots we have knight to h2, preparing to bring the knight back to f3, and now finally knight captures an a2. And here uh, white should have gone for rook to c7, just a nice move, uh, threatening to win uh, the b7 pawn after, let's say, black pushes d3. We have rook captures here, and then a5. The pawn on a5 is now nicely protected. If knight f3 attacking the rook, rook to c5, and still uh black black is uh, maybe a bit better but still it's uh hard to imagine that you could actually push this uh, uh all the way uh here rook to a1 was played with an attack against the knight here but now black has rook to a5 so the knight is defended and now knight to f3 with a double attack against the d4 pawn so naturally black advances the pawn with d3 and now rook to d2. Here, white uh, white's idea is to just block the pawn here and also prepare b3. Uh, after b3 is played, then both of the rooks will be attacking the knight here. And the rook on a5 is undefended. So b6, you have to play this. The rook has to be defended. With b3 by white, but now it's not a problem for black. Uh, because, uh, well, pause the video here and try to find uh, how, to, how do you save the knight here. Uh, I'll give you a couple of seconds. So just a normal decision in the end game. Uh, you're probably gonna, you know, guess this one correctly. Not guess. I mean, calculate uh, everything out. Uh, so the idea is knight to b4. This is the correct uh, move because if you go knight to c3, then after this capture, rook captures pawn captures. White has knight e1, and you lose the d3 pawn. There's no way to defend it for black. So here after b3, knight to d knight to b4 is played. And now we have rook captures on a5, b captures on a5, and now you don't have knight to e1, as already the knight and the rook are guarding the pawn, so rook back to d1. Uh, here white wants to go rook to a1 to start cleaning up uh, the doubled a pawns. Uh, we have king to f6, and now rook to a1, going after the pawn, uh, tr trying maybe to trick white, well, not really to trick, but if, white, if black continues to push here, for example, pawn to d2, then rook d1, just wins the pawn there's no way to defend it uh, so uh, we have knight to c2 attacking uh, the rook here and here black sets a very nice trap here if white actually captured the pawn rook captures an a5 uh, do you see what uh, black had in mind once again pause the video and try to find this very nice idea uh, that the gregorian had in this position uh, i'll give you a couple of seconds uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, you are an excellent uh, forker with a knight. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, knight to e1 check. And here you can see it's check and uh, the knight is under attack. The problem is your knight is not defended, but it's not a problem. If you move the king, you lose the knight on f3. But what happens if white captures? If white captures, then d2 happens. We get the same idea uh, that we've shown in the previous video in the Lasker versus Capablanca game. You can prevent both d1 queen and d captures on e1. Uh, so if the knight moves, uh, you just grab a queen, and if you don't, you, well, you will lose a knight. So here, white could play rook a1, but still, you're going to get a queen, and here it's just a rook against the knight, and it's not even close. Yes, you do have a, your upper pawn is white, but uh, still, after the knight moves, you're just going to attack the pawn. Pawn b4, rook attacks pawn, and next move you're going to play rook b2. White will have to move the pawn, and you lose the b4 pawn. So it's not even close. After knight to c2, we have rook to d1. Uh, just uh, keeping an eye on the d3 pawn, and now king to f5. And here, uh, the idea is to prevent the black king from entering the position, and you do this by playing rook to h1. Uh, the idea is after king e4, you can play rook to h4, and you don't uh, have a square for the king. You have to you have to go back uh, with the king, and then what, the game continues. You can go maybe rook here. You can go maybe rook checks here. Maybe try and pick up this pawn. Uh, but in the game, knight to d2 happened, and here white way, white made a critical mistake of allowing the king from advancing with king to e5, which was not possible uh, when the knight was an f3. So this is exactly what Grigorian does. We have king to e5. And now, knight back to f3 check. We have king to e4, and now rook to h1. So it's the same position, only it's now white to move. So if it was white to move, we would have the same position. But uh, here, it's not white to move. It's black to move, and black makes room for the king. While 
uh, advancing the pawn d2 and again what what sorcery is this white just goes rook back to d1 and it seems black blundered a pawn uh, or uh, you know did black actually blunder a pawn so feel free to once again pause the video here and try to find what was black's idea here otherwise you're, you're just going to lose a, a very nice pass pawn uh, while I give you a couple of seconds uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations for the second time. You are an even greater forker with the knight. And uh, for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, knight to e3 check. Not only check, but also you're threatening to pick up the rook, so there's no uh, other move but to capture the knight. This is what uh, Gallego played with. F captures on e3, and now king captures on e3. So again, you have to... Uh, decide what to do here. You have to prevent king e2. If, if king e2, then it's all over. You can't play king to f1 because the knight on f3 hangs. So Gallego here goes knight to g1, but now black finds a, 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 another very nice way, rook to c8. The threat is rook to c1, uh, and here we have rook to f1. Trying to meet rook to c1 with rook to f... If rook to c1 now, then rook to f3 check could pose some problems for black. Uh, but not really. If king to d4, knight e2 check, uh, after the king moves, you still can't capture the rook uh, because black just gets another queen. Uh, so even this was not possible, but black does not uh, allow that. Rook to c2 now threatening d1 with check, a discovered check from the rook. King to h3 and now rook to c1. And now it's a bit different. We have rook f3 check. King to e4 and now rook f4 check. Uh, like we said, if you uh, try something with the knight, it doesn't work. So rook f4 check, king to d3, and now you no longer have any good options. Uh, rook to f3 check, we have king to c2, and here white played knight to e2, trying to maybe get uh, this idea that if the pawn queens, then you can get rook c3 check, but still there's nothing uh, to actually prevent uh, white from instantly losing after king b2 and rook captures here black can even give up a queen for example queen captures knight captures king captures and the king and pawn endgame is completely winning for black uh to quickly demonstrate if king g4 you're just gonna pick up this pawn king f5 king captures and this pawn is much faster because this pawn uh still can't even uh, start marching forward you have to first clear the the, the f7 pawn and so black is just much faster. So here after knight e2, black doesn't even allow that. Grigorian just plays rook to h1. Uh, and it was in this position that Luis Gallego resigned the game. As there is nothing more to do here. Once you move the king, let's say king g2, you're going to play d1 queen now. And now there is nothing more to do. Uh, checkmate is soon to follow. So uh, amazing feat by uh, Armenian Grandmaster Karen Grigorian. Uh, just so I don't forget, here are the standings of the tournament. Uh, the first, uh, you know, uh, 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 10, uh, 10 people in the standings. You can see that uh, Karen Grigorian uh, has 100% uh, victories, 9 points, uh, a point and a half uh, ahead of Canadian Grandmaster Kevin Spraggett. Uh, you all know uh, the old saying, never Google uh, Kevin Spraggett images. Uh, and there we have it, rating performance 3,103, which I, uh, to my knowledge, is a, is a world record in rating performance, which is just insane. Uh, 9.0, uh, the biggest one so far we have here, the final standings of the 2014 Singfield Cup, where Fabiano Caruana uh, destroyed the field with 8.5 out of 9. Uh, but he his rating performance was, as you can see there, uh, 3,098. So uh, Grigorian topped that uh, by, by a margin of 5 points, which is really insane. And okay, you could argue that uh, Caruana's opponents were, uh, well, definitely were much stronger, but, uh, uh, but still, uh, a record is a record. Uh, well, you know, you could say that, uh, I don't know, Bo Bobby Fischer beating uh, Taimanov and Larson 12-0 uh, to 0, uh, w will not equal such, such a rating performance, but uh, as the ratings were much lower in those days, uh, but still that performance, uh, it, it, in my opinion, has not been matched uh, to date. Uh, but yeah, I think Carlson had a like a, like a 3100 and something during the Surrey 2014 uh, but that was a blitz tournament so uh, this doesn't count as this is a classical event uh, 
so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Congratulations to, to Karen Gregorian on uh, achieving this uh, beautiful record. And also, I would uh, I would like to thank uh, once again Pedro Fonesca for suggesting this very nice game, as it's impossible to follow all of the tournaments. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, that's why I introduced hashtag suggestion for you to use in the comments, as I will be even though okay, this game was suggested to me via Instagram, uh, but still, you know, uh, without your suggestions, this uh, channel would not be as rich uh, in content as it is so so th thank you all for that uh, but yeah also uh, I would like to thank uh, Bill Danier, uh, Andreas Lazos, uh, Chris Picard, Majid uh, Jaberi and John Andrew Williams for a contribution to my channel thank you a lot I really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and I will see you soon uh, continuing the Capablanca saga we are all we are nearing the end of the long saga uh, checking up on your nice suggestions such as this one and as always, checking up what's new in the chess world. Thank you all, uh, and I will see you soon. And have an excellent rest of your day.